let's walk through a confidence interval problem. Okay, so, I'm looking at this problem here about Kids Digital Day. It summarized the national summary of 2002 Americans aged 8 to 18. They're selected to be representative of the Americans in this group. Of the survey, 1,321 report owning a cell phone. Now, we need to interpret a 90% confidence interval. Not only that, but construct it as well. For a proportion of all Americans who owned a cell phone in 2010. First things first, before we even start doing this, we need to break down our conditions. Okay, our conditions. I think I'm going to write that a little less thick, but that's okay. All right, so our first condition, random. Now, unfortunately, I'm reading this. Since it's a national survey, um, they say nothing about this being a random sample. So we can't really verify it, but we're going to go forward anyway. We're just going to say not sure. And we'll hope that since it is a reputable service that they did make sure this was a random sample. Now we're looking at what's done by USA Today, so we can say that it was pretty reputable. So we'll go ahead assuming that, but again, we're just taking note that we're not sure because they didn't say. 10% of the population. All right, is it equal to or less than 10% of the population? All right, we got 2,002 Americans aged 8 to 18. Is that less than or equal to one-tenth of Americans 8 to 18? Well, considering last I checked, I think we're close to 300 million people in this country. I think it's safe to say that 2,002 is less than 10% of children aged 8 to 18. So, well go with the check mark there. Now, large counts. We do have to prove this. We can't just say, yep. So let's see, we got 1,321 reported earning a cell phone, or owning, excuse me. Is that greater than or equal to 10? Certainly is. Let's give it a check mark. Now, 2,002 minus 1,321. Is that greater than or equal to 10? Certainly is. Give it a check. Notice how I made a point of using everything here. I didn't just say, yep, yep, yep. I actually quoted the article, and I did the math. That's important. Make sure you're doing that. All right, so now I want 90% confidence interval. So I'm going to write out my formula here. I'm going to take P hat, which is the statistic I find here. I'm going to add or subtract critical Z times standard error, which in this case is going to be P times 1 minus P over the size of my sample. So we'll plug in what we know. Now we have 1321 over 2000 and 2. That's going to give me a proportion, but I'm just going to write it out as it is, just to start. Plus or minus. Now for critical Z, I'm looking for, I'm assuming a normal distribution here. So I'm dealing with the 90% here which means 5% at each tail. So I'm going to use that tail probability to figure out my critical Z. Using inverse norm on my TI, I can plug in the area or percentile up to here. Since I'm dealing with Z scores, I'm going to go with 0 for my average, 1 for my standard deviation. And when I plug that in, I get 1.64. This is going to be my critical Z. Now, for P, notice how I changed that to P hat, because dealing with statistics here, I'm going to actually use the decimal. So 1321 divided by 2002 gives me about 66%. Pretty darn close. 0.66. Which means that the amount that don't own a phone will say is about 34%. And this is out of 2002. So now I can use this to construct a confidence interval. Now I could have gone the easy way of just plugging it in my calculator. A lot of us would have probably just done that. But I think it's good to understand the formula and break everything down. Alright, so I've got 0.66 plus or minus. Now on my calculator here, I'm going to plug it in. 1.64 times square root of 0.66 times 0.34 divided by 2002. And I get a standard error, plus or minus 0 0.0174. 
I know, I got very specific there. I'll even just round up to the point zero one seven. So that means if I subtract that from 0.66, I'm going to get 0.643. And if I add it, I'm going to get 0.677. So now I have a confidence interval. Now it's time to interpret it. That's, that's the important thing here. So now I can say I am 90% confident that the true number, or true percentage rather, of Americans... Eight to eighteen who own a cell phone is between point six four three and point six seven seven. I could also say I'm 10% confident that the true per, uh, percentage of Americans who own a cell phone is not between 0.643 and 0.677, but I'm not going to say that because I want to convey that I've got a good idea of what I'm doing here and that I did a really good sample and that I'm pretty darn close to that true parameter. All right. So that's what statistics is about. You don't know what the parameter is, so you're doing your best to get as close as you can to it, so you don't have to ask everybody. We don't want to do a census. We don't have the time for it. We don't have the money. So what we do is we just, we do a good sample, we can come up with a confidence interval, and we hope that our true parameter is going to fall in there. Ah, so let's see. Now we have, of those, ah, now we're dealing with an MP3, so we're going to deal with that problem too. So, again, we're doing a 90% confidence interval. Let's check my conditions. Always should do that. I'm going to do this one in blue. Luckily, I surveyed the same people, so I can use the 10% condition from up here and just bring it on down there because it's still 2,002 Americans that I surveyed, ages 8 to 18. So I can be confident that that's covered. Now, let's see. It is 1,522 greater than or equal to 10? Certainly is. It's 2,002 minus 1,522 greater than or equal to 10? Certainly is. Large counts, done. Random, again, they did not tell us. Not 100% sure about this. So we're just going to go forward. We'll assume that since it's a reputable service that they did a random sample. Because we know if it's not random, that's going to incur bias, and you can't really fix that. There's nothing you can do to make it any better, so we'll just hope there's no bias involved. All right, so our statistic in this case is 1,522 over 2,002, plus or minus. And our critical Z is going to be the same, luckily, since we're doing a 90% confidence interval. We don't really have to change that. Now, I'm actually going to figure out that percentage. 1,522 divided by 2,002 gives me... Never perfect. All right, it's 0.76. That's good enough. That means that 34%, oh, excuse me, 24% don't own an MP3 player. This is out of 2002. So now I can just do some basic math here. So again, I did my math. Out. I know this is 76%, plus or minus. I'm going to plug into my calculator 1.64 times... The square root of 0.76 times 0.24 divided by 2,002 gives me 0.15. Crap, it's never easy. 0 0.01 it says 565. Five. I'm going to round it to 0 0.016. I could go with more decimals. I'm going to opt not to in this case. All right, so I'm going to subtract to give me the low end of my confidence interval. Point seven four four. All right. Now I'm going to add to give me the high end. Point 
zero one six. Excuse me, point seven seven six. Might think you're done. You're not. You have to interpret this thing. These numbers don't mean anything if we can't put them into context. So luckily, I already wrote a pretty good one up here. I'm going to copy it and edit it. God love technology, right? So, I'll make it blue, just to match. Style. Alright. I'm 90% confident the true percentage of Americans who own a, not a cell phone in this case, we're going to go with an MP3 player, is between... In this case, we got point seven four four and point seven seven six. I can also say I'm ten percent confident that the true percentage of Americans eight to eighteen who own an MP3 player is not between these two values. Now, again, what confidence interval is is you're figuring you're doing a sample. If you did a bunch of samples of the same size with two thousand two Americans. You have all these possible statistics you could get. Now, statistics are the summary of a sample. These are all the possible statistics you could get. Tons of them. You can see there's like infinite numbers here. I'm just drawing a bunch of them. The true parameter lies right here in the middle. That is your true parameter. Which means some of those statistics are going to capture the true parameter. However, we don't know which statistic we caught here. We could have caught this one. We could have caught this one right here in the middle. Heck, we could have caught one way out here. We don't know that. That's why we can't say with 100%... Well, we could say with 100% confidence. Thing is, if we did, we'd just have to use a really big interval. So what we're saying is that we're 90% confident that the interval here of 74.4% and 77.6% Somewhere in there, the true percentage lies. And we're 98% confidence of that. Because what I did here was a sampling distribution. That represents a bunch of statistics. We don't know what statistic we caught. So what a confidence interval does is we we basically base it off of a statistic, and then we create a range. And we're hoping that that range captures this true parameter right here. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. In this case... Yeah, we're 90% confident it does. So hopefully this helps you a bit with confidence intervals.